Hmm. There's a lot of options for unknown and complexity. Complexity, excuse me. They could either go Lestrick mid or Lestrick rubik to port and then go for another mid hero here for complexity. So there's a lot of options for both squads coming out. I think. If I'm complexity, I would take. What do they have right now? What are their options? Okay, I'm not sure. I think if I'm unknown, I would take something like uh, an Earthshaker, or Crystal Maiden, something like that that has some AOE capability but can help out the lanes and can actually zone out the Darkseer. I'm actually kind of a fan of CM right now as yeah. a support. Uh, Skywrath would be okay because the trail is pretty good on the Phantom Lancer. Like if you just throw, is it the W? I don't use uh, the concussive shot or yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't use the. I use Legacy Key, so I actually have no idea what the hockey is. Um, but the concussive shot follows you through no matter what, right? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. So I would like to see one of those three support heroes. Oh, Tinker, that is oh. that is a Kotaro hero, I believe, for That's unknown. That's a support lena, then. That is, that is something I was not expecting, but uh, Tinker is going to be going in support lena, lifestealer, in the safe lane with Undying, Bounty Hunter roaming around. I don't know. This is like, yeah. this is very weird to see like these heroes come out for the side of unknown. But I think that if the Phantom Lancer hadn't been picked up, the Tinker wouldn't have been picked. But you needed something with AoE clear. Like, yeah, you can take something like the CM or... Um, something of that nature, but it's not as reliable damage, right? Whereas the Tinker will always have a Huey. Yeah. Um, but I think if I'm Complexity Gaming, if you think that's a Tinker mid, uh, I'm trying to think of the ones right now that are okay. I know Swindle plays heroes like Venno sometimes. I guess they could put Leshrac mid and um, pick up another support. That would actually be okay as well, but what do you really... Okay. Not Razor. That hey, that's a... The life stealer counter, right? Two for one special going up against the Tinker mid and the life stealer. Obviously, the light, uh, the static link is going to be very important here. It's actually going to be Kotaro on the life stealer, and it's going to be Dark Noah playing the Tinker as well. So, uh, this is a really weird draft. It's got a weird dichotomy for unknown. They have Tinker, who like you think about it in the late game, and you have like life stealer, who's very active early game and like gets super early game items, and they have an Undying as well. For complexity, it's sort of the same thing. Razor kind of runs at you early, but he's still a beast late game. Phantom Lancer, very mid to late game oriented. Ziz plays in that way as well by going for like early treads, uh, Aquila, Drum, maybe into that early Diffusal Blade as well. Could be pretty big for Ziz here. So I don't know about the draft, man. I'm not really sure who I'm a fan of more at this point as we jump into the game. I'm actually really surprised that um, actually I awarded that completely wrong. I'm sorry. Sometimes I just have blackout moments where I start out a sentence completely wrong. Uh, I'm, I'm not surprised that they took the Razor. I think that it would have been the hero actually before they took the Phantom Lancer mm -hmm. because you have to understand that you're against a life stealer. You don't have the best responses to him. Leshrac as a core doesn't do very well against him. Yes. So I think that going for the Razor is the no brain choice. Yes. And that is like when I was talking about counters, like that's the one here that I think of when I think of heroes against life stealer. Static Link going through the Rage, obviously. And not only that, but if, if Rage is down, Plasma Field and all the other damage that Complexity have in terms of magic damage are going to do work here. So Complexity going for a couple of picks against those heroes. Uh, the Tinker seems to be the X Factor, I think, for, for Unknown. How well can Dark Noah do mid? How much farm is he going to get? They're going to stack up the jungle more than likely. Is Complexity going to deal with those camps later on down the road? Are they going to get aggressive? There's a lot of questions that still have to be answered. Um, and we're just about to jump into the game. 23 seconds, the battery runes will spawn. A couple of wards placed up, but just defensive wards. One on the top rune spot for both teams. A lot of circles being drawn. I noticed this, that both teams love to draw on the map. They're, they're actively using it. There's one player playing tic-tac-toe. <laughs> that is Kotaro. Okay, so the one thing that I'm a little bit concerned for... Um, the battle begins. Actually, I just is that if you have a bounty hunter, I think that you don't... The obvious thing to do is to place a sentry ward in the mid lane so that your, uh, your mid laner doesn't get ganked. Mm -hmm. But I feel like whatever your solo lane is as well always has to have a sentry in. It felt like in the last games that I casted personally for the Bounty Hunters, they just put a sentry in the uh, mid lane and forgot about the other lane, so the Bounty Hunter just roamed to the solo hero, killed him like 40 times in a row. Like, I think that you need a sentry ward in the lane that you plan on um, kind of leaving up to your own devices. And actually, Complexity, they gave one to Moon Meander. Yeah. And this is so smart because you realize that Moon Meander, because he's going to be in this uh, 1v2 scenario, He's going to be the prime target. Yes, he's going to be getting ganked a lot, or at least attempting ganks there. But for now, they're actually just going to TP greedy down bottom. They know this is an aggro tri lane. Z Freak and Fly rotate through, so it is Fly Lishrak support with a core Phantom Lancer farming it up. Z Tox going to go with a right click for the Shadow Walk. He's on one. K flies out as well. Greedy now 
Going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Oh, gotta be careful. Ziz needs to maybe try to find this kill splitter. Telkinesis it's gonna connect, and this should be your first blood. Even Decay, he doesn't have it ready to go. Ziz will pick up that last hit. Zetox is gonna walk around. They don't have the sentry because we already talked about it. They gave it to Moon as well as Swindle mid. But a fast start coming through from Complexity, getting an early kill for Ziz on your Phantom Lancer. Yeah, and I think this is more important than getting the uh, sentry at the bottom lane because you know that with the type of lane that you have, Bounty Hunters and especially weak laner, that you're okay with this sort of setup, right? Like, he's not really going to do too much. It's pretty much just going to be the end time that you have to contend with. And so I think it's a better idea to just kind of uh, secure Moon Meander's farm. And there's not a whole lot that a Life Stealer and a is going to do, right? Because he can just surge out. The timing doesn't last long enough. That life stealer top lane not having a great time. Oh, he's getting Moon quite Ander. low. Yeah, this Iron Shell, the right click, LSA, Moon surges, but dies to the Dragon Slave from Excel. Moon going for that classic Moon play by trying to be a bit too aggressive. Kotaro's like, yeah, that's easy baited, and just finds his support a kill, which is actually pretty huge. But bottom rune spot, Edict's gonna fly through its level one detox like a tickles, but it's not gonna kill me. And did he get the bounty rune? It was Fly that did pick it up or so that's pretty big. Yeah, Moon has to realize, I think he thought that the Life Stealer was only level 1 and Lena was level 1, but he's pushed out so many waves and I mean, Kataro was in no danger at all. Like, he had rage the entire time. Yeah. Moon was so low and that level 1 Dragon Slave is so much value because it does so much damage for uh, the level that you are in. In this mid lane... Swindle steals 56 damage, only level 2 Static Link actually, but... How's this mid lane going? 9 last hits to 9. If you had to give an edge over either of these heroes, who would it be in terms of the Tinker versus the Razor? I think that the weird thing... Oh, God. Okay, now... Is he going to die for that? Advantage. That's probably worth it, I think. What did he lose right here? Uh, my hotkeys are completely different. He lost boots. Okay. Uh, I don't think it's as bad. I think if you're going to lose your career, the boots aren't the worst thing in the world to lose. Like, yeah. He's got two pieces of regen left. For example, if he was a melee hero with the bottle. Ooh, ooh greedy, fade bolt, gets the tombstone off. Zetok gonna get caught out. Salve goes through, it's gonna get canceled. Split Earth flying, Zetok, Zetok in trouble, the last right click, the sentry ward on the ground. Somehow Z Freak dies, it's a bottle. Be able to regen up, that's sick. Meanwhile, Greedy caught way out of position. Decay comes in there, the Telkinesis, Ziz has no Spirit Lance. Greedy's gonna run at Z Freak, Z Freak, going to survive and gets a double kill for a Rubik. Are you kidding? Oh, this bottom lane is disastrous right now for Unknown. Yeah, and there's no way they can really send them as well because an Undying doesn't add any value to that top lane. It's not a hero that can roam on mid, for example, on Moon Meander, or uh, not Moon Meander, uh, Swindle. Mm -hmm. So he can't roam on Swindle, he can't roam on Moon Meander. You're kind of static at that bottom lane, but they're really overestimating their strength. Like, they keep thinking, okay, we have him dying. We've won the fight. Like, there's no way that we're going to lose this fight. But he has to realize it's always going to be a three on two. Yeah. And in certain circumstances, that three on two, based on positioning, you might be able to take that that fight. But so far, Complexity have been the one that's initiating. They'll find the initial lift into a, a split earth and then followed up by the massive damage that is a Phantom Lancer with Spirit Lancer early on in the game. Greedy just can't stand up to that. He does have three decays now, so he's a bit more tanky. They can't really deal with him until those decay stacks are gone. Zetox is going to roam back in. He's only level two. I think the supports on the other side are higher. They are, in fact, by one level. So bottom lane is going fantastically. In terms of mid lane, it is 18 last hits to 14. So Swindle has, even though he doesn't have his boots, he's still doing fantastically. And then top lane, well, Moon's going to try to go on to Kotaro Yama. He already uses his rage. And Moon actually does back away, survive. He's out of regen. He does have a ring of regen. He actually salves up in the meantime. Smoke mid from complexity with Z Freak and fly. This, this kill could be pretty big, honestly. Yeah, if they're able to get this kill in this mid lane, and they should be able to, yeah, he's oh. gonna be spotted. They, they just got the lift. lift. Split Earth is not gonna go. He's gonna try to juke this. He's gonna. He's just farming. He's farming <laughs> he knows. He's like, he's he like, actually I'm still isn't dead, though. He's not dead. They're not using the Split Earth. He's juking it. Lightning Storm, they finally get the kill. That was a lot harder than it should have been to get that kill, honestly. Yeah. The funny thing is, he gave up on life. That was one of those, like, I quit. <laughs> I was like, I know I'm dead. I'm just gonna get this creep. <laughs> you saw him, like, throw out the laser. He's like, whatever. I I'm pretty dead. And the funny thing is, actually, how close it was for him to be able to survive that. For example, if one of his supports came in just a little bit sooner, you could kind of see like a Tokyo yeah, Drift yeah, scenario where running into them was the smart move. Yeah. Um, but oh, again, that reference. rotation. Thank you, thank you. I'm all about the references, bro. Dude, I actually am such a big fan of that movie, but everyone else I talk to is like, that movie sucks. It's like, the... It's, uh, it's the best. You just can't take it seriously. No, definitely not. Like, think about it. Is that some Yakuza gangster boss is going to disown his like 
grandson because he loses a race on top of a mountain. Like, it doesn't... They're not that honorable. <laughs> it doesn't really make sense, but... Uh, uh, much like that game, or uh, much like that movie... I don't really know where I was going with that, man. Sorry, right, we were talking about Tokyo Drift. It's fine. Everything's going well. Maybe not for Unknown, though. You unknown. can't really make too much sense of it. That's where I was going. Exactly. It. That movie does not make a lot of sense, but that's yeah. okay. It's a Fast and Furious movie. Unknown. That Tinker, you know, it looked really clowny, but it's not meant to make sense. Yeah. Is he talking to get chased down? But actually, he's in Viz. They do have a sentry. Z Freak, if he puts it up right now, oh my god. Oh, this I think is he so just wants to ward. They're going to rotate. They know that Darkno is over here, but Z-Talk has been scouting they them the entire way. And in fact, z is going to make his presence known. They dust him, and instead they're going to go on to Z-Talk. Split up the Edict. They have Lightning Storm. z is going to fall. Shrooken, the last right click. They get the laser. Darkno finally gets involved and gets a kill. Meanwhile, Excel gets the kill on the Moon Meander top. Kotaro dies for it, though, in the process. Kotaro going down, devastating, but at least he does have his Midas, and he already did use it before dying. Yeah, but that's... Throughout this entire game, all of the trades have gone, I feel like, in favor of uh, complexity so far. Although the Life Stealer, surprisingly, is out farming this Phantom Lancer quite heftily. Yeah. At the same time, being able to get the kill is pretty huge. And more importantly than that as well is just the fact that uh, they've been able to get kills around the map. They've slowed down the farm of the Bounty Hunter, who is level 3 right now. And at bottom, I mean, they went for the kill, but uh, it was more harassing. I'm actually really surprised right now. This everything but uh yeah the tinker's doing just fine i mean he's doing tinker things it's kind of impossible to stop a tinker farm like yeah you kind of just expect that he's going to get a lot and uh, you hope to slow him down at least a little bit though. yeah exactly that's the the main thing that you're going for moon i i in some ways uh, i disagree with this build because i don't think arcane boots are 100 percent necessary and the top he has to be a little bit careful because he does uh he does have the angle though and it's daytime but he's harassing kotaro hiyama out so much right now like, being able to pressure him this much, keeping him low, forcing him to use his infest defensively to just, like, pop out of one creep is the correct move. I feel like if you can do that against the life, so you can do it against any hero, and that's the biggest strength. Meanwhile, Gritty, Telkinesis, Split Earth is way off the mark, actually, but he still might fall here. Lightning Storm, no Solar he's actually completely out of mana. Use your Mango and Soul Rip, come on! There we go. Drops the Tombstone instead, he'll die for it, but maybe gets a kill. Zetox is gonna walk in, they really want this Tombstone. Z Freak getting low, but... Like, clean up the tombstone, they even get Greedy, who I guess just gives them an extra 100 gold for that kill, and now they're gonna put pressure on the tower, too. Yeah, that's even more than 100 gold, because he just uses the mango. He listened to you. Yeah. He trusted you. That wasn't the move. <laughs> well, that was not the play. Do not trust me. I'm a 4K MMR player. <laughs> he used here. As soon as you said that, too, he immediately... I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, here's 100% dead there. I thought he was gonna soul rip or something. I don't know, maybe, like, decay and maybe get a kill on the backside. I thought something could happen there. No, he went for the other level of the, uh, he went for another decay, but, uh, it was just not there. And at top, actually, oh, man, this lean is going to oh, no. down. The Iron Shell, the double Iron Shell creep wave. Moon Manders is just sitting back saying, easy, just sits behind the creep wave, not even doing anything. He got vacuumed into, like, three creeps, which had Ion Shaw. I mean, you're oh, not Oh, God, Kotaro, you don't have Infest, man. You have Rage. That is not good up against Swindle, but the life steal from Open Wounds is pretty good. However, Swindle gets the kill, gets the right-click bottom lane. They pick up another kill. Z-Talk shadowing Z-Freak as well as Ziz. I'm pretty sure he got that kill under the Lashrak, but that doesn't really matter. Z-Talk is getting close to level six, and then once they, they've been trading the entire game. Oh, they were trying to bait. They're trying to bait him into the sentry oh, right now. Oh my god, that was next so, level. Oh, they're so close to it. This is so. 
This is so meta because it's really obvious that they have a sentry ward there because why would they just decide to walk onto the left side of the trees slowly like that? But at the same time, he chances it. Well, they, they needed to like have like Z Freak here and like Ziz over here or something. Yeah, exactly. He's like sitting on top of the sentry ward. He's like, please walk over here. I, f I feel like he's got a pretty good understanding now. Lena gets the kill. Darks here at top lane. Laguna Blade was used. Got the revenge. Yeah, I mean, I missed that because he just hits his R button and then he dies. So that's unfortunate, but... Yeah, that's that's a good kill. Tinker is actually the top in net worth in this game. His boots to travel are done. So now he's going to be working on the Blink Dagger. And uh, he will do so by pushing in mid. I don't know if he has any other stacks to work with. I don't believe so. Yeah, he doesn't. That's the main thing is that you just kind of need a hero uh, to be able to slow down the pace of the game. And that's Tinker, right? Is that he guarantees farm. He kind of forces the team to make over aggressive moves. And this bottom tower is definitely going down. They do have a dust, uh, but no sentries. And then bottom greedy. What with the split worth? Oh, the he misses. misses. Fly go down. Z talk. They dusted him up. Ziz is actually oh, going to take you nice. away. Go Dark Kanoa might even get Z freak as well. Two for nothing. They've missed a couple of those, man. They really have. Telekinesis and a splurt. You usually think that's like a 100% a kill, but you miss that timing. You miss the uh, the accuracy, and all of a sudden you don't get that kill. You have to TP out, or you just die. They got a track kill on that as well, which is even more important. Is that yes, it's a two for zero, but at the same time, it's a two for zero with no. Um, with no rebuttal on the top, Katariyama is actually just going to get out of there. Recognizes the power of the Ion Shell, but cancels it, and that might have just been a huge mistake, Mott. Oh, he, they wanted to, uh, of course, he's to come in. Laguna, Moonbeander getting low, but not dead. Now there's going to be the Dragon Slave, but Kotaro going to fall for this. Not worth the trade, Excel. They actually saw them rotate through. There was this Observer War. They saw Spindle Melons there. No Darks here to surge. There's going to be the Heat Seeking Missiles, LSA. Nice juke from Swindle. Last right click. He had 168 damage. And Swindle says, that is Alina. You are not very tanky. I will whip you and you will die. So Swindle picks up a double kill there when he really probably shouldn't have. They definitely should have not canceled that TP. He saw Swindle walk in with his Observer Ward. He figured that he was going to kill, get the kill on the uh, Darks here because he saw the rotation from the Lena. But even then, like you said, he saw the rotation coming. And that's just way too greedy because yeah. that's never in a million years worth it. And Moon Meander, if you know him well, like he's just going to be like, I'm the best. Like That was an easy <laughs> case, stuff like that. He's like, I meant to do that. And I mean, he's happy with all these trades that are happening right now. Yeah, he's, uh, he's clear doing pretty well. Level 9. Akim was available. He was about to use it. He actually cancels the animation. He up here. They're going to track him. Shrewd is possible. Fly. Laser. Vacuum goes through. They need the laser and heat seeking missiles. Last right click. Surges himself. He's actually going to make it away. Good vacuum for Moonmander. Keep himself alive and make space. Look at what's happening mid. Fly and Z-Freak. Support duo take down a tier 1 tower easily. No rebuttal. They'll even smoke up. They actually find Kotaro. Z-Freak smoke breaks. In the jungle, Swindle and Z-Talk. Mm, Z-Talk is not the hero you want to go on, I don't think. Yeah, I think that he's waiting for him to get a little bit lower. He doesn't have mana, but he does have two levels in the unstable current. He's hoping that somebody can make their way up. But if anybody kind of comes into this jungle area, Swindle should know, and he has to give up on this. Swindle is sitting way back onto the tier oh, two. Oh, he's going to get rocketed, actually. In that. that range. Oh, okay, that actually is ridiculous. Fly gets to kill bottom and dying. Their hero dying places that they probably shouldn't be dying. So. Yeah, that Undying has played aggressively through this entire game. I feel like this is more Cole playing poorly because they could have gotten a lot more out of that, right? There were two attempts at bottom lane where I feel like if they were able to get the kill immediately on the Undying, they suffer no casualties. Um, I don't want to say poorly. I think it was just a little bit uncoordinated is yes. better to put it. Yeah. Like, it's one of those things where um, it's not so much maybe... Fly is the one throwing out the stun, so he's going to naturally look bad. But it might also be a thing where Z-Freak might not be communicating and things like that. So it's hard to say who's at fault here. Kotaro's going to go in and Izzy has no doppelganger. Spell stolen, Laguna Blade. Ziz, that is a big kill. Did they get the track off? They did. Track kill on a Phantom Land. A huge pickup coming out for a known there. Yeah, the one thing, though, is that there's still a lot of farm on this Razor, who's actually tops the net worth now. Um, Midas. I have to go for the hand of Midas, and the best thing though is that he hasn't been punished for it. Like, Swindle's been playing this game really well. He's been hitting a ton of rotations around the map. It seems like every single time that he moves to go for a gank, it's successful, and that's the sign of a good roamer. Yeah, uh, one one gank probably shouldn't have been successful in that top lane, but we'll get back to that. Um, I wonder that I wanted to say there was something I wanted to touch on here. Can't quite remember though. Um, I want to say Z Freak has held on to his telekinesis for a very long time. There's like that. That period of wait time where they're in the air, and then if he, he like doesn't last second, where he's like, okay, you're going here now, but it's always like 
you can see the line as soon as you do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I'm tr I don't know if anyone can understand what I'm trying to say here, but... Uh, no, I understand it. <laughs> it's just he's waiting on the telekinesis throw deck. It's not really working out with Fly him. So they've missed a couple of kills, I think, for that specific reason. Ziz top lane needs to be careful. Moon's shadowing him, but so is Zetok. Zetok has track up, ready to go. He's also a full man on these missiles, which is long range, flying through, doing some damage. Just kind of annoying in general. And this is where it gets kind of annoying for complexity. He's fighting into Dark Noah now that he's a Splink Dagger. He's going to be able to split push, make sure that every, all the waves are pushed out. He can even go bottom now. Zetok is going to get infested by uh, the Kotaro Ayama. Life's to the rage is going to be stolen. Split Earth, they're going to jump out Kotaro Ayama. They did not expect this. Here, here comes Swindle Melons. Static Link's going to go. He pops the drum charge. Kotaro Ayama is not nearly fast enough. He does get off a beautiful arm to toggle, but not again. And we'll go down a second time. Swindle Melons picks up the double kill, looking to rotate in and try to pick up Dark Noah. He's going to blink into the tree line. He's got to bottle up and TP away. He should make it out. Z Freak nowhere near. In fact, Swindle taking a lot of march damage, but still a double kill coming out. Swindle is having, like you said, a heck of a game. He's really carrying it so far for complexity. It's honestly his rotations that are doing a lot of the work. It's hard to say, though, because um, I know it sounds like I always kind of back out and I don't want to insult teams and stuff like that, but. It's hard to say. That's a good thing. Yeah, it's hard to say who's making the calls for what, right? Right. For me, I'm a mid player, so I always take the credit and be like, those are my godlike rotations. <laughs> but you never know if it is a support saying, hey, come over here, you know, you're gonna do this and that bottom. The Tinker actually dies. This would be so huge. He's actually getting quite low, though. Oh my god, Z Freak goes down, but in the end, it is going to be the Strack picking up the Tinker kill, and that is huge. I mean, they will take that crit every day of the week. And that's even more space created for Ziz up on that top lane. He was going to Fusel first, not going for the drums. TP's coming in, Zetox nearby. There's going to be the Chinata going in. Kotaro going through as well. There is Doppelganger. He's going to try to get to the high ground. Kotaro knows this, but there's going to be a Moon Mander waiting in the backside. Get up oh, there, Ziz. Get up there, Ziz. Kotaro gets up there as well. Pops the armlet, but there's the wall. Vacuum as well. Oh, he, he tracks the wrong one. He tracks the wrong one, and now Kotaro is in a world of hurt, but so is Ziz. Ziz falls in the end. No track, though. Down for 38 seconds. Moon Meander coming to save the day. Had a Glimmer Cape, didn't quite use it there. Not sure if it was necessary, would have saved his life, but still, a one for one exchange. I feel like that could have saved him, but uh, I mean, it doesn't really matter too much because they were still able to get the kill on the Life Stealer, who's been dying uh, over and over again. Five total deaths this game, and this isn't the performance that you need on your star player. Yeah. And this is a very important game. They need to tie the series up. And not necessarily to like, they don't, if they lose the series, I don't think they're out of it mathematically, but this is a. It's almost a must-win series because of how far Complexity is ahead of everyone else in the group. So, Complexity, if they 2 0, they're in a very Radiance solid spot. Tower. And they only really have to deal with Mouse Sports, uh, who might be ahead of them or tied with them. Zetok roaming in, looking for Z Freaks. His TP's back, his defusal so close to completion. There's a couple heroes top lane. Elsewhere, the Tinker's TPing back to base in mid lane. That's where Kotaro is going to say, I'm done fighting for now. I'm going to farm mid with my Might Aids. See you all in like 20 minutes, maybe. It's one of those things where you're never really sure as a player what should be happening, right? Because if you're behind the thought process is, okay, we have a Tinker, let's try to get aggressive on the map and do something. But at the same time, um, or a Bounty Hunter, sorry. You kind of want to get aggressive because you are behind and you think track kills is the answer. But at the same time, it, it feels like he's trying to force it too much. Like he's feeling a little bit of the pressure and saying like, we have to make something happen around the map instead of just kind of slowing down the game because the Tinker will lengthen the game much longer than it should. So I feel like he should just be playing the game in, oh, in this jungle. If he dies again, this would... The Infest is unfortunately not going to work out on that small Centaur. Kotaro gets blown up. The Rage was not nearly long enough for him to survive that, and his team was too slow to rotate. And that's just another death for, death for Kotaro Haryama. Which, by the way, that was a smoke game from Complexity, and... And now it's not even unknown getting to force the issue. It's complexity realizing that they have an advantage and making accurate rotations with smokes and just finding pickoffs. They're actually playing this game so well. Uh, they really are. I just want to highlight the type of rotations that they're going right now. Their support duo are finding all the space in the world for their team right now. Mm -hmm. um, they're completely shutting down the bounty hunter. Like I was kind of wondering what the formula was for shutting down a bounty hunter, but it's just being proactive, laying down sentry traps, right? Like the one at bottom, they said two for him already, and he's just had no impact right now. And that's the problem with the bounty hunters, that if you're not snowballing, it really feels like a useless pick. Yeah. It just feels like it doesn't do anything for in team fights. It can't get up close. He's a walking track, honestly, at this point. Yeah, exactly. That's what he is before. But normally, if it works out, then your team 
gets far enough ahead that it doesn't really matter because even, think about the way that the bounty hunter is typically going to build, right? Like Blink Dagger, Force Staff, maybe a Vlad's or something like that, but he's not going to get anything to get up close and do damage, right? It's just positioning. Uh, so he's a walking track, but in this game, he's not actually getting track kills. What does it matter? Yeah, he's a walking free kill. Complexity if they have the vision for it, which, like you said, they've been really proactive. Dust, especially on fly, they have sentries as well. Z Freak has a sentry to work with. He's saving up for a dagger. There's already a glimmer cape. We were talking about Lashrak and how we typically like to see it in a core role. Fly is playing it so well. He got so many levels early on in that lane. He had like level three uh, lightning storm early on, and that damage coming up from lightning storm, it's ridiculous. We've seen it before in the core role, but if you have a support role, that's just even better. You have more more damage from all sources, pretty much. And this top lane is going to go down as well. And, uh, Ziz, has, Ziz hasn't, I keep saying Ziz, Ziz hasn't had the best game so far, but oh, and at oh bottom, God. the stun just barely misses, and Fly is actually getting quite low, getting deeper into the jungle, oh, and he actually oh. just gets popped. He has a dig, and I didn't see the dig, and one coming out dark, and Noah says, hi, let me just zap you real quick. Z Freak actually dull marches while well. he was doing a Decent bit of damage there. Tap. Does go down. Moonbander picks it up. He didn't get denied, which was kind of surprising. They had three heroes rotating up there. Swindle going to get jumped on. Dagan comes out and pops the BKB. A 21 minute BKB purchase. Plus 1500 gold for Swindle Melons. When did he buy that? Oh my lord. He's farmed and level 17. 6 0 oh, 3 for Swindle Melons. Top of the net worth. I can't believe it's level 17 right now. That's actually such a high level. And um, I think for Unknown, what they should be doing is maybe getting Oh, and Swindle's actually caught here. Is he so dead? He's getting quite low, and uh, he's being chased out by this bounty Earn? hunter. Oh, and he's actually trying to go for it, but Z-Freak's actually right there. He should be fine. 66 HP earned, not nearly enough damage. Well, nearly. I, it actually kind of was nearly enough damage, but z can't find the kill. That was a good try. Kind of greedy from Swindle. If he had given up that kill, a track kill, and his streak to a bounty hunter, again, it's a bounty. It's not the biggest thing, but... It is a streak is a streak. I think it would have gotten the bounty somewhat back into the game, and it's a morale thing as well, because the bounty's like, oh crap, I'm gonna get a full level and a half for just this kill, and they're actually chasing up Moon Meander up here. Such a clowny game. Moon's gonna TP out, they actually can't find him. He's gonna make it away. The Tinker is making this game so freaking clowny. Like, there's there's heroes dying across the map, Lifestealer has died <laughs> like six times. Uh, I, I just don't know what's happening, honestly. Like, is it Agen 2 gets a kill when he probably should be dead? Yeah, you're assuming at this point that, especially with the type of lead that Cole has, being able to kill Katara and Yama as many times as they have, you think they would be a little bit more ahead than they are, but that just hasn't been the case so far. And Katara Hiyama, now he's starting to farm really safely. I think he's like, okay, I can't farm in my own jungle. There's no real lane that I have to go to. Just kind of play the ancient game a little, wait for people to show themselves on the map, and then maybe I can get aggressive because this support duo has been on point all game. Yeah. That they've kind of slowed down a little bit, and I think that goes for every hero on the map right now. Swindle kind of almost got caught there recently, um, but for Complexity, they're clearly putting the pressure. They had to deal with top lane and getting it pushed in by Tinker for a long time. With that being said, though, they do lose the bottom tier to tower. I actually have no idea when that happened. I think it was a lot earlier. Level 2 pick from Fly, so that might not have been what it came from. Maybe the Darks here just kind of split pushing. Unknown are going to group up as 4. They're going to head mid. Boots of Travel in. Uh, he has Boots of Travel 1. No Boots of Travel 2 just yet, but I'm sure some someday later he will go for that item, so... Dark Yama starts to hit up his jungle again. And, uh, this leader is actually pretty farm though, Malik. He has a Yule Scepter, which I think in this game especially is going to be really useful. And there is a Glimmer Cape on uh, Fly, which I think is to just try to pick off the Tinker, right? When he goes through those rotations, yeah. uh, when he's really greedy, you Glimmer Cape so that you can take a lot of the March damage and then go in and try to stun and set up for things. But the pace of the game is pretty much slowed down. And Razor isn't the best core to have late game, depending on how you build it. Like, for example, uh, Cole at some point have to go out round, right? Yes. Like, you don't want to just extend the game against a Tinker because when a Tinker picks slotted, it's more like he's 24 slots because he just keeps rushing over he's and over again. How do we deal with this Tinker now? He's so big. And that was the, I think that was going to be the problem for Complexity since the beginning of the game. There, there was no way they could shut him down enough. They've got no catch on their team. Yeah. I'm surprised they've actually killed him twice so far. There is a blink on the Rubik now, so that's something. But it's, it's going to need a lot more, honestly before they can start really trying to pressure tier two even the high ground. So they're splitting up the jungle though, they're splitting up the map. Ziz has now got a Yasha, he's got his defusal, so he's gonna go for a Manta next, he even has a DD bottle up. And that's the thing, we, we talk about Razor in the late game, but it's, all, it's also Ziz as well, who we haven't seen too much of an impact from just yet, but later on down the road. Oh, is he talk? Nope, he's fine. He, he gets brought down, Spear Lance won't connect because he's out of sentry range, they still shadow walk. He really wants track though, that's what he's trying to go for. 
Someday he might get it. Yeah, but Stinker's just trying to be as annoying as possible. The Phantom Lancer is trying to get a little bit of farm, but he does need a lot more than this to be able to be super effective. And Wound Meander pushes out that top lane. And now you've got this weird kind of farming truce where he pushes out that top lane using his Ion Shell, and then the Tinker does the favorite back for him. Yeah. One day someone's going to bait it out. Fly is going to get spotted, but actually dust up on Zetok. And Lightning Storm is going to slow him down. Doppelganger forwards. This, this should be a kill. Spirit Lance, yep, eh, that'll do it. Fly almost goes down to the Heat Seeking Missiles. Blink forward, not going to find the kill on Fly. Arkanoa actually needs to be careful. Here comes Z Freak, finds Greedy. I don't know if they should fight this. They do have Swindle coming in. Ziz getting low. Dagon comes through, not yet. Darkanoa is going to fall. Big pickup for Ziz, gets the double. Now going on the Tombstone. Swindle vacuum back. Greedy tried to TP out, not going to make it. Swindle Melons gets a wicked sick streak. And pick up a double kill for Ziz. Stuff from Complexity, that was exactly what they needed. And Unknown kind of somewhat overextending in their own jungle. Maybe thinking he's a bit safer than it actually was. It's never been safer than this game. They haven't had the heroes and the type of impact early on to be able to protect their jungle. Like last game, they had a lot of safe laners and oh, if Kotaro Hiyama goes down again. They didn't get the split earth off. They're gonna static link, they're baiting out the rage. It looks like Moon Meander's gonna surge away and Kotaro does have Infest. The wall comes through, it does hit up on him, but they steal a lot of damage. Meanwhile, Bounty Hunter gets fly on the backside. Excel gets blown up. That comes through the last right click from Swindle. Did not miss. He has 224 damage. That hurts. Safe very least. Go for the two now. Because they decided to aggro try lane this entire game, they've had complete control of the jungle. It's also the type of uh, downside that you'll see associated with Bounty Hunters is that you've got a hero that just can't zone people out of your own jungle. And they've gone aggressive on him so many times this game, and now he's 1-6. He's trying to lead the chase right now, but I don't actually know if this is going to lead to anything. Ooh, Swindle, there's no Basher up on the Life Stealer. He's able to TP away. Kutaro dropped something. I don't know what he just dropped there, but it didn't really matter in the first place. So they don't get Swindle. He gets out. Fly was the only, I think, casualty. Pause coming up from Swindle. They need a second. The way it's looking right now, I'd say, like, the last couple of minutes, there has been a lot of farming coming out from both teams, and I think that benefited Unknown because of how much farm the, the Tinker was getting. But those past couple of deaths, losing that Tier 2 tower and getting Ziz that farm, now it feels a little bit more rough, way more rough, in fact, for Unknown as we progress through this game. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's just, honestly, the fact that they decided to go for these aggressive lanes, and I think Kotaro Hiyama kind of played... Um, a little bit off this game like this isn't the type of performance that personally i expect to see you know i was told by pretty much everybody under the sun this guy is the next top tier talent and yeah. for him to go uh one and six and three in a game like this i mean they needed a star studded performance from him and right now i don't know what it really is but it, it, it more feels actually that complexity is playing this really well yeah. they're playing so aggressively they're picking their spots uh, they're baiting out the bounty hunter, but then they're also bringing in the razor to make absolute sure that he, if he isn't alone, you know, the supports just don't go down. It's just been constant rotation after rotation. Yep. And that was what I saw between Complexity and Rear Gaming as well, was just a good, a good performance, a good Dota game, honestly. It feels solid. There's not many mistakes coming out from them. There's a couple here and there, like those kills we saw missed from Fly and the Rubik. But other than that, really... They've been hitting everything else, and they've been, like you said, creating space all over the place. So from here, where do you go? You hope that Tinker maybe makes more room, and then Kotarayama can s get some farm, but then he has to deal with a, a farm Phantom Lancer, too. That's the biggest issue, right? Yeah, the Phantom Lancer goes to town right now on this uh, Life Stealer because remember I said that he has to kind of change his build for the upcoming game is that uh, if the Phantom Lancer gets something like a Heart and a Manta and things like that, I think he has to go for a Manta because... Uh, you can't just rely on the illusions, right? Because they fade so quickly. Yeah. Uh, but if he goes through items like that, what are you really going to do as a life stealer? You're just going to get kited. You never know which one is what. Yeah. Especially when he double gangs. Um, so I think he has to go for something like a Mjolnir and an AC and an Abyssal Blade. Yeah. Like those are the three items, but he's nowhere near any of these items. That is a long time before he gets any one of those. Unless he has something in the courier, he does not. It's, it's, life stealer is so single target. There's some trash talking, apparently. Some NA Dota trash talking. Is it really, uh... Okay. Oh. I don't know what's happening. It's probably just unknown. They're... I can understand, though. They're, they gotta be a little bit annoyed, right? They're just like, come on, we just want to play. This is ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, but I can understand Cole's point of view as well, because it really sucks. I think they're in, like, Texas or something? That sounds right. Eh, when you're in Maybe something... LA? I don't that's, know. What, that's what old Cole House was anyways, and 
I live in the west coast. It's miserable when you don't have AC. Yeah. Uh, down south. Honestly, dry heat coming through. <laughs> it's just... Sometimes that you get a lot of dudes in a gamer house with a lot of computers turned on, and... I mean, we've experienced it here, too. It's the worst. It you actually don't is a lot. really understand it until you've been in this type of scenario, because we had, like, 20 people in the lounge room with a bunch of computers running with their AC at full, and it really felt like it made no difference. Still hot. I'm not one that usually sweats. Like, I don't, I don't have that issue when I have deodorant on, and I was, like, there for, like, five minutes, and after we had played that game, like, I need to leave now. <laughs> I gotta get out of here. And that bottom, oh, Ooh. Z Freak was just outside of range right there. Look how much damage he's taking from Smarsh, though. That, that he went from like full to like 25 HP by taking a full march to the face. Oh, he's actually gonna wait this out. This would be worth his life, actually. He's got the one, he just needs to get the lift, and yeah, his team's in position. There's the lightning storm, there's the wall back, back into, and that's just gonna be an easy kill. Z Freak, he did take a lot of punishment there, but he will survive, and they end up picking up a pretty much needed kill. Anytime you can get, it's a lot like the storm game for Darkano. Anytime he dies, it's just so critical. It's the same type of thing, I think. Oh, it's even bigger on dying on a hero like Tinker, especially in this game. Mm -hmm. It feels kind of similar in the sense that he needs to be... He needs to pick up the slack for the rest of his team. Yes. Like, the lanes worked out so much better for complexity this game than it did in the last game. Um, and I think that the laning phase matters so much, especially in this meta, uh, and this patch, I should say. So when you have this dominant of a laning phase and you're able to fall it into the jungle, get aggressive, your Tinker has to... He actually has to play like a perfect game. Yeah, uh, it's it's not been perfect. He's played well, but it's just right now it's not enough. And with that, Complexity head to the Roach Pit. And every little thing is adding up for Complexity now. That Tinker kill transitions into a Roshan, which transitions into less map control coming up for a known more than likely. Not, we, we've touched on it already numerous times, but Z-Talk is just a walking track less than that maybe. He does have phase drum, but he's still not really uh, attributing anything in these team fights. Z-Freak has been... A, he got the Bling Tiger, he's gotten a couple of kills. Fly has played pretty well. He's already getting a soul booster for maybe a bloodstone on his supportless track. That's how you know you're transitioning. That's pretty good, so. That is definitely the sign of things to come. Like when you when Lush, like you said, if he's this farmed, it becomes difficult because it's one of those things like don't judge a person by how they treat their equals. You know that quote? It's like yeah. judging by how they treat people less than them. It's like, don't judge a game by how the cores are. Like, judge it by how far the supports are. Yeah, right now the supports are pretty farmed, at least for Complex City. Z-Talk will try to keep you away. Splitter's not going to be in time. Um, if that was Z-Free going in first instead of Fly, they get that kill. But, eh. They miss out. Ziz needs to be careful bottom, or mid, rather. Actually, Kutariyama has no way to deal with Doppelganger, nor does uh, Greedy. On undying, there's absolutely just nothing they can do. There's no silences, no basher. Even if they had it, it wouldn't really matter. And Kotaro Haima just kind of, he has to look at the PL and say, well, I can't do anything to you yet, but now I have a basher. And soon I'll open up an abyssal. So hopefully that'll work out. Despite the fact that he's one and six as well, I'm really surprised at how he's been able to keep up and farm. Mm -hmm. He's actually a net worth despite things like the run and all the tanks being taken. It's just because he's been uh, in good positions for kills and he's had the AoE bonus gold on top of the fact that he's just been uh, farming really well during the times that he has. It's like death, okay, farm for a while, death, farm for a while. He's yeah, had a, exactly. He's had a deathless streak, but that might end here. He's going to get the defusal. He has rage on off cooldown now. Ziz actually gets bashed up. He's got to be careful. There's the wall coming through. Katara Yama's pretty fast. There's a track on him. Drum is popped from Swindle. It's still static. Now they have passed out. Blink forward. Nice play from Dark Anoa and Katara Yama. A mouthful of names, but they do, in fact, get out there somehow. Ziz was manning up and almost actually died, too. That was actually huge because the Tinker actually waited uh, and spot checked for half a second and waited for the life stealer to get back in him. And then he blinks away, but if he hadn't gone away, that easily could have been both of them dying right there. Absolutely. That if, uh, it was a bit sketchy for Dark and Oak. He makes the play. Dagon does little to no damage to Swindle. He's a heart of Taraz. He'll regen that up in just a second. In fact, he's only at, he loses like maybe a thousand HP, but it doesn't really matter. Greedy's going to get Talgis back. There's going to be the plasma field vacuum coming in. Greedy might drop the tombstone. In fact, he does. So what's up? He's very tanky, actually. It's a lot of damage being stolen. Swindle will not go to high ground, and that's the smart play. He would have gotten that kill probably, but if he gets bashed up something with that PB on, it's not great. Meanwhile, Kataro gets forced forward, going on a Kataro, rather Swindle melons. Taken up, Swindle actually just falls. Despite how tanky he might be, he gets blown up. Lashrak gets a kill on Excel down in the bottom lane, I believe, and... That is a huge kill. I think that was a track kill as well. In fact, it, with that 2,000 gold for a single kill, 
and 900 of which goes to the, the life stealer. They're not dead yet. That's a huge pickup. That is incredibly significant that they were able to get that one kill and it swings it that much. That's just the amount of uh, gold that they get for how high of a level Swindle was, the streak on top of that. I mean, he had seven in a row before that point and that's going to be really huge. It's just going to buy them at least another minute as well, Mount. That's like the main thing is that you're just trying to buy time for your Tinker to get as big as he can. Yeah. And uh, eventually, I mean, he... That was actually a sick force staff. He forced Kotaro Hayama to get closer to Swindle. I, they probably would have gotten the kill anyways, but it's just those little cool plays that make me love this game even more. And Dokonoa, despite him dying a couple of times, he's played about as well as he can, given the way his team is playing and his positioning, so... Yeah, I mean, you can't expect a Tinker not to take Risky Farm. Like, he's going to do the same thing every single time, right? He's yes. going to try to blink in, uh, blink into the side, or travel in, blink into the side, try to survive. Cole have just been setting really good traps. And that's from the beginning of the game, too, against the, the, the Bounty Hunter. That's something they've really invested in. Is yeah, it, exactly. It's just baiting people into their, their demise for no real reason whatsoever. But yeah. their complexity are... They're not in, in, like, a dominating position. Like, we just saw there that, like, you, yeah, there's a hard task on Swindle, but he's killable, easily killable, in fact, if you get him down low enough. So they got to be careful with how they approach the next couple of fights, I think. Let's... Yeah, they went way too far past the tower as well to die for an undying of all he was that yeah. uh, he's got a mech, he's got a cloak, he had tons of decay stacks on top of that. The likelihood of getting that kill is incredibly low, especially with how Swindle has built this game. You look at all of his items, Almost all of them are incredibly defensive. The heart doesn't provide you any damage, uh, nor does the plate mill. The BKB is helpful, but it doesn't actually give you uh, the raw damage that you need. And he's going for the AC right now with the heart and the BKB kind of signals to me that they want to try to end the game soon yeah. and try to go high ground with this type of build. Because yeah. I feel like AC is such a good high ground item in general. Yes, I agree with you. That that will provide some damage coming through the AC. It's a little bit, it's at least more than what he has now. But they're going to try to jump on him. There's going to be the track coming through the open wounds. Oh, but look at that. He didn't rage off a giant use of the unstable current. Uh, there's the Eye of the Storm. BKB goes, gets stuffed. Now Kotaro Yama going to work up this play. all he already goes through as well. Z-Free getting low. Moon jumps in, surges down, Swindle. Mech is up as well, saves his life. Vacuum all onto all five, but Moon still has no support coming in the backside. He'll get patched up, he'll get right clicked down, and then Darkano gets the double with the laser. And again, another aggressive play from Swindle Melons leads to a couple of deaths on his team. He luckily survives, but he was inches away from going down had that mech not been there with the surge. He just doesn't do any damage right now. I think he's gone overly tanky in some cases, and the other issue is that the Phantom Lancer just doesn't have enough farm to justify being in the fights. Like, every single time the Phantom Lancer shows up, the Life Sealer hits him three times, gets him to half HP, and then he's like, okay, I have to actually back out of this fight. And while you're at half HP in the Phantom Lancer as well, I mean, how much value and utility are your illusions bringing? They die so quickly. Yeah, they get blown up, especially March in the fight, too. And exactly. I imagine there's, there's going to be Shiva's Guard picked at some point for this Tinker. I'm surprised he hasn't gone for it earlier, but that seems like a really, really good item this game, too. Oh, yeah, for sure. But this Tinker, I mean, the travel twos with the Bounty Hunter would pretty much keep him safe forever. Yeah. Swindle Melon and Z-Freak looking for Darkanoa. Ooh, ooh, this oh, could be a big kill. He's going to try to TP out. Z-Freak gets the lift off, and Darkanoa, you are not going anywhere. They missed the stun again. It doesn't really matter. Z-Freak might have died, but um, still the kill, the kill's a kill, and that's a big kill at that. He's no buyback down for 68 seconds. Now there's so much room for Ziz and everyone else to work with. There's no tier 2 bottom. They really need this tier 2 top lane, but they can't quite get there yet. I really feel like um, they're, they've been on off point with that Rubik lift into that stun. He misses it like every time. Yeah, that, it seems like Fly is having more success just kind of throwing it out by himself without having to rely on that lift actually. And I, I think that's um, something that they're gonna have to kind of watch this and talk a little bit more about. I think they just got really excited and went for that kill, but yeah. they still managed to pick off the Tinker, which is the big thing. And at this bottom lane, I think they realized while the Tinker's dead, we have to at least force the buyback um, or just try to get as aggressive as they can. And, they're not glyphing and they're not using the buyback right now. Down so for Cole should know that this is actually down. They, they, they know that he doesn't have the buyback. They'll put as much melee uh, pressure on the melee racks as possible. They're going to glyph, or rather mech up. There's the glyph finally coming through as 
fast side. Kotaro jumps in. Z Freak getting low. Dashed up as well. Splittered onto Z Talk. He probably will fall. Pulse Nova. Now the BKB goes for Swindle Mel. And they do get the bouncer onto the backside. Finally, the respawn coming in for Tinker. They pick up another. There's a doppelganger. They want Kotaro Yama. They get the Earth off from Fly without the setup. And now they're going to go to work. The Thistle Blade goes onto Swindle. But here comes Ziz. And Kotaro cannot infest. Double kill coming out from Ziz. Suddenly, the fight turns around. It looks like a note. Might just lose the game here. Tinker has to be careful. Will get out. He's on the low ground. No way to chase him down. But Greedy, that's another that's another matter entirely. They get the vacuum back in. Swiddle has the unstable kicker current, which slows down Greedy. The plasma field goes further. Ziz has got doppelganger in five. They won't chase further. They've got the buyback and go tomorrow. Dark Noah gets out. They will use the buyback. Will get back away for complexity. Pop the Manta Illusions. Get the Edict damage in. Do a little bit of chip damage to the melee racks and then get out. That seems to be the case. Greedy TP's back in. Assault Karras is now done, but... It looks as though Complexity will not push into the base just yet. Yeah, and again, that's just Fly. That's three suns in a row. I've seen him hit independent of the uh, Rubik Lift, and it feels like he's just more comfortable relying on it uh, without having to communicate. Yes. Uh, that's kind of what that signifies to me, but doing a really good job right now of landing every single sun. And a lot of those weren't easy, which confuses me that uh, they're not really on point with that Rubik Lift into the stun, because that's one of those combinations that I feel like is more classic. Uh, that a lot of teams are used to, but I mean, he's been so on point with those solo setup Lush Rack stuns that I'm really impressed right now with how he's done that. And um, I mean, the fights are just completely swinging in Lexi's way. The fact that Kataro Hayama, he finally gets a lot of farm, but he has to immediately use part of it on the buyback. Yeah, that's that's the biggest thing, and that means that Ziz can keep getting bigger without having to worry about that buyback and keep getting space as well. They're starting to control the map a bit better. I want to ask you, do you think they, that kill on Kotaro had they not hit that split earth, or does he get out? Uh, I think that he was dead, regardless of how that split earth goes. He was kind of far away from the base. Yeah, because they, they can just continuously use the Lightning Storm. The ultimate doesn't really make a difference at this point. Yeah. And uh, I think that he should die, but the split earth, the main thing is just that getting a kill, getting out is the main part, right? Yeah, so right. You want to just be able to switch targets Earnings. nonstop. Yeah, exactly. They were almost going to get Greedy as well, but Greedy had a, a good Yule set, actually. I didn't even know he had that item until he just used a second to go on to Swim Islands. Even though Unstable Current was there, it just wasn't enough to catch up to Greedy. So, uh, Greedy came, by, came from Kotaro Hayama. So, Complexity is doing some house cleaning, honoring some wards. Roach is up in about five seconds or so. Everyone's alive. It could be a big fight at Roche, which has been a killer for American teams. If you know anything about America, it's that team that roll. Ziz is almost at top lane. Actually, Doppelganger's at the, the guarding is coming. Vacuum goes through. Talk to the wall. Telkin back to the wall. Talk will fall first. They have enough damage. Trying to TB at will. Guys, I think in the well, down for 96 seconds. And spot back. They're looking for Dark No, They cannot find him. Actually, he's TPing at just yet. Moon chasing after. Blink away, he's in the line. They need a vacuum. Can they find the Moon Meander? It's on for six seconds. Split Earth just barely missing from Fly. The timing will be in there regardless, but 80 seconds without a Life Stealer. There's going to have to be a lot of marches here coming up from this Tinker. Yeah, they're going to want to get aggressive right now because Force is coming out of this raid. Uh, you could go for something like a Roshan, but you could at any point. My opponent are never going to contest that. Like, there's no way in hell leave their base for them, so I think that they have to go for more here, and they might actually just kind of bully through and take the list because the Tinker right now is mana you know, trying to get a bunch of candle. Well, look at Swindle, look at Swindle, he's just kind of... Back in, back in Dark Kanoa can't afford to die, he does have buyback, I believe. He's gonna have to use that LT this moon. Does get off a beautiful, beautiful glimmer from Cape Gate. Still kind of low, Guardian Grief down, there's the little pick him off. That came in from Dark Kanoa, there's a gem on the ground, nothing comes through, or tanking up, he's got... Flesh Storm going to work. Some stone on the ground as well. Swindle doesn't seem to mind, but they need to pick up. They're taking a lot of damage. Rook and Toss will through as well. The Laguna Blade cleans him up. That's a track kill. Down for 90 seconds. Being a bit too aggressive again from Complexity. Block trying to be away. Will he make it? Absolutely. LSA not there. Is double cross Ravine and then TP's out as well. Illusion's going to town and greedy, but he's out of mana, so the damage really isn't there. Diffusal damage not really helping out. So Yeah, they got a little bit too aggressive, and Swindle does pay for that. But at the same time, they forced another buyback out of the Tinker. They were able to take out that tower, which matters more and more, right? Because you're, what you're aiming to do if your complexity is win one fight, take two sets of racks. Like, taking one set of racks against a Tinker can actually mean too much. But taking two pretty much means that he doesn't really get the space to be able to blink around, push out the lanes and stuff like that. It becomes a lot less profitable and a lot more difficult. And the map control goes even further in the complexity. And we already talked about Ziz getting room to farm. And... 
You're not even going to be able to get out of the base if you're unknown with a two sets of racks down, really, at all. So, um, well, there's a gem drop somewhere. I don't know. He's pinging it out either way. I think they recovered the gem they lost on Moon Meander. They actually have it on Moon back again, which is another big item to have. But for now, man, it's just 42 minutes into the game, and unknown are. It feels like, and they're just trying to stay alive until maybe Kotar Hayama gets big enough, which we'll see. Yeah, they're pretty much relying on him to be able to have more impact than this. The problem, though, is that he gets kited so frequently. Like, yeah, he's got he's actually got a really impressive amount of farm, considering how this game has gone so far. Uh, the fact that he's third in net worth, even ahead of the Tinker at this point, is, a frank. I mean, frankly, it just astounds me. Uh, the fact that he's three and eight, and the Tinker is seven and six, and has just had a little bit more space to farm, and he's still kept up. So that's a good sign for Unknown. And they've managed to hold Rex for the longest time despite losing key heroes here and there. Like they did it without the buyback on Tinker. Yeah. Was that what it was? And so those are some good signs for you, but they have to start eventually making moves on their own to try to uh, get things done around the base. For complexity, it's more house cleaning towards the Roche Pit, which is up. Roshan is ready to go. Swindle has respawned. And Kataro's trying to push out mid. Pushing out top to sell. I like how they're playing right now. They are really splitting up the map and making sure Flexity like, have to head into one lane or another. And they're going to try to find Kataro. The track is up, so he's got some extra movement speed to work with. Everyone's pretty speedy. Okay, Unknown are getting a bit aggressive here. They're heading out of their base. They realize that Complexity are going to have to TP top and defend this tier 2 tower. Or they could just sack it and go for Roche. But it looks like Fly will head up there with, by the way, 15 Bloodstone charges. I want to point that out onto a track. A support list track. <laughs> this is like more than the Storm had the entirety of that last game. Yeah. And he's actually really farmed right now. He's got a Shiva's on top of that. It's ridiculous. Yeah, he's actually incredibly farmed right now. That is, that is the dream for every portless track ever. Fly is like. He's living it out for all of us, man. That's true. Oh, I think Moon knows about this. He does have the gem. Backing back up. Track goes. Shrew can toss Oh, he wanted through. to get that track himself. Kate okay. couldn't quite get it against Shadowwalk again. I don't think he's gotten track this game. Uh, Z Freak, buddy. It's been rough for him. That's all right. TP top lane. Fly hits a split earth. He actually glimmer capes onto Excel. Excel has got a Yule's. Uh, even with the Yule Scepter, I, I do not see him surviving this. LSA is going to connect onto Moon Man but Fly. Just pops his Pulse Nova and Edict, and that's a dead Lena. Yeah, and that top Katar here. Oh, they see him. They, they actually know about this, and they might want to bait this. The Tinkers are there as well, but. Uh... They do have a gem, but I don't think it matters. I think they're just going to try to circle out and get out of this, not give up too much. They can't afford it. If Kotaro and, and Dark Kanoa both die, they both have no buyback, I believe. Actually, Kotaro has buyback now. Dark Kanoa does not. Kotaro has uh, rebounded after using it earlier. So, right? That that would have been bad if they lost the Tinker. You lose the Tinker at this point, the game's over, right? And just, that's how it He's is. He's single-handedly holding everybody back. And he's even got a clarity in his inventory. This is the GG clarity. Like, I have to get mana as soon as possible. Like, do whatever I can at this point. You're spamming bottle in the the well. You're spamming a clarity out too. Like, yeah, exactly. And you so just Z's is going for the Roshan. He's got a Scotty and the Vlads, so he should be able to do this quite easily. Oh yeah, Solo Roche. But there's a trap being set mid. Z freaking Flyer, kind of alone. They won't go for the kill with Kotaro and Z Talk. Of a four staff, I think he forced himself forward. Z Freak still invisible. Shadow Walk, he'll scout things out. There's no sentry wards. They're really relying on track for their detection more so than anything else. Not that they've really needed it, but. Yeah, it hasn't been a point of contention. And this Razor mod continues to get even more farm. Now he's got uh, an Aegis and a Butterfly. I don't know if they have to wait for anything uh, more to go high ground. Uh, there's a courier kill somewhere. For... Radiance Courier's been killed. That's surprising. Yeah, Z I think was invis and he just walked over here and killed it. That must be what happened. Could have been fly. I was don't there anything know. important on it? Well, we're going to find out. Let's see here. That was a Assault Oh, no. That's a full AC for Kotaro Yama. He Go had on. it. That's actually so pivotal. Just having the Hyperstone alone, you get so much value and utility out of having the fully completed AC. No, he doesn't have it, but they're oh, going to find fly. Like this might be some of his Bloodstone charges. Yeah, that's that's his Bloodstone charges going down again. They throw up, I believe, the Abyssal and the Laguna Blade, but now they have to TP back immediately. Down for 13 seconds. Doesn't matter. He's going to bot in anyways. He has bots on the Shrek. He's up in eight seconds, for God's sakes. How much does that kill actually matter? I mean, I mean the Bloodstone charges are gone, but still. The base is now getting attacked by the Illusions. They drop the tombstone down. Those are going to right clicked by the illusions, but not really do much damage. Not enough to at least take the tombstone down. But 
They're just trying to hold on at this point. If they can find Dark Kanoa, which they do see him, by the way. They plot the field that he's going to get forced. He's looking for more Ziz. Actually, he doesn't have the Aegis limits on Swindle Melons, who's just going to work. Look at this. The AC going onto the Mailer X. Oh, oh, that is an untimely disconnect. The pause comes immediately. Lag coming through. Oh, no. You... Uh, I don't want to say anything, but uh, that's that's not a good time for a disconnect for Unknown, specifically, so... It's just unfortunate, and they're actually reconnecting back in this game. Yeah, they're going to get um, back in. But this helps them as well, is that it gives them a little bit of time to formulate a strategy. They're like, okay, we're actually so screwed, what are we supposed to do here? We can't really lose racks, uh, but we can't really fight them at this point. We lost the Tombstone just now. We have no AC. Yeah, and Swindle's got a full Aegis. Like, well, how do we actually deal with this fight? They kind of maybe have to pick off Fly and Z Freak, but anytime they go for any, anybody on the back lines, Moon or Ziz or Swindler, like there's just so much to try to deal with. Like Fly alone could take Rax if he if he's left to his own devices with Edict and his Pulse Nova just pushing out the the creep wave and things of that nature. Swindle alone can do the same. Ziz can do the same, and then the supports. Well, I mean Moon Meander as well as. Uh, Z Freak can just jump in and hit huge telekinesis in back walls. There's, like you said, there's no way to fight into this. There's really just there's no way. Oh, definitely. And I, the main thing right now for Unknown is that they they have to just continue to delay. They have to wait for Swindle to get over aggressive again, like they did. There were a few times where I thought the game was just going to end, where they kind of hold this uh, miracle line and you just spam out the Tinker, and that's the goal right now. Just abuse Tinker as hard as you can. Like keep the game going as long as you possibly can. Wait for them to overextend. We're going. I do not know. Okay, Swindle will unpause. All right. I was like, they aren't saying G, but they're ready to go. They take down the range racks. The melee racks getting hit up as well, and it looks like they're just going to leave this racks to die. Honestly, they, they can't defend it. So one racks down. It's just one racks, but that leads into two. They're going to draw the line where they're going to head top. Look oh, at Kotaro actually goes for that. That's a really cheeky play. He went in. They just dropped something or something. Yeah, he did. He dropped. Oh, and actually back wall. Oh my God, the Tinker's dead. The 96 no buyback. What a disastrous play. The Shiva's guard going to come out as well, and Greedy's going to fall. That might just be the GG play. Uh, I think in terms of this game, I don't know, man. Everyone plays the wolf in complexity. Yeah, it's actually been really astounding how much uh, they've had in terms of synergy so far and the individual plays that they've made. Dark and that by that, he just got it. They're still holding on to this game. Force for oh, Telkinesis, Kotar Hayama bursts it, infests into a creep the last second. Gonna get denied, but it's the wrong creep. They need to do damage to it. With Soul it. Rip coming through Kotaro, able to actually toggle. They disconnect again, but he's dead. They call GG. They know that it's over. They'll go moment. down 2 0, -oh, man. Oh, good try on that defense there, but Complexity will take the series to nothing. Complexity surprising a lot of people with how they've played in the TI5 qualifier. They are playing damn well, man, and I, he just keeps buying Midas. He bought six Midas. Patara Yama getting upset. He's buying Midas. He has six Midas currently in his inventory. Well then. I think they're a little bit mad with how that ended, especially with the Tinker disconnecting. Yeah. But I don't think it would have mattered. No. That they, there's no real controversy here. I feel like Complexity is far enough ahead right now that, I mean, they just played it so well that it didn't really seem to have too much impact on the result. Yeah, and uh, there were some issues at the end, like we talked about with the, with the disconnects, but I mean, when you can't fight it,